<coughs> Namaste everybody. Welcome to the Monday class. Today we are going to do back balance. What you will need for the class today is of course one yoga mat, two bricks, one blanket, one strap. Now any strap will do. I'm taking the strap what I intend to use in the future. So I will be explaining a little more about the strap later on. I hope you're all looking forward to the class. Stretch your legs out <clears throat> straight in front. Stretch the knees out, push your knees out. Take your right leg under the left shin, left leg under the right shin. Sit evenly on both the button bones. Place the palms behind, move your hips forward, lift your chest. Roll your shoulders back, pull your shoulders down. Now when you pull your shoulders down, see that your neck gets long from behind. Lift your navel, lift your chest. Join your palms together, look straight and close your eyes. Relax your eyes. Relax your breath. Relax the muscles of your face. Relax your shoulders. Sit evenly on the button balls. <clears throat> Center your spine. Lift your navel. The Nabi Chakra, your navel should open up like a flower. Lift your chest, don't close your throat. Sing with me. Take a deep inhalation. Chittasya Pade Navacham Malam Sharirasya Chabaidya Kena Yo Akaro Tantra Rabbuminam Tantra 
Patanjali Pranjali Rana Posi Abaho Purusha Karan Shanka Chakra Siddhanam Sahasya Shirsam Shvetam Pranamami Patanjali Srimate Anthaya Nagarajaya Namo Namaha Take your head down. Place your palms on your knees. Take your head down. And we'll start with Yoga Veda Kriya. Yoga Veda Kriya is very important because you warm up your body, you stretch your muscles, you open your joints so your postures come easier and you don't have injuries. Now in Baitak, the first one when you're coming down, some of you wrote to me that you have a knee injury or a knee problem and you cannot do the posture. It is absolutely fine. Just watch and learn the posture. You can start with the next one. Then. Only if you have pain in your knee. If you cannot come down, take a blanket, place it under your heels. Join your palms, join your elbows, stretching your knees back. Open your knees and then bend your knees, stretch your back out. Sit down. Lift your lower back. Lift your chest. And then you're opening your hips, which means you're trying to move your legs away from the hip, creating space in the hip joint. Lift your chest and breathe. Deep breathing. Now, if I deep, have deep breathing, the mic is too close to my hospital sound, like a storm. So I'll try to keep it a bit soft. Lift your hips, come up halfway, roll your spine and come up, stretch your legs, stretch your back, your lower back, stretch your arms and come down too. Stretching your knees back, bend your knees, stretch your back out and sit down. Lift your lower back, lift your chest. Now see that you are not only pushing your chest now, work from your sacral number spine to lift up. Look straight, breathe. Five deep breaths. And lift your hips. Come up halfway, roll your spine and come up, stretch your legs, stretch your back, stretch your arms. Be soft in the body. See that you don't tense your body because then you will lose the point of your yoga asanas. Stretching your knees back, bend your knees, stretch your back out and sit down. Lift your lower back, lift your chest, open your hips, deep breathing. Lift 
your hips, come up halfway, roll your spine and come up, stretch your legs. Now, stretch your navel as I mentioned before. Your navel should open up like a flower. <coughs> stretch your arms and come up forward. Stretching your knees back, bend your knees, stretch your back out and sit down. Lift your lower back, lift your chest. Open your hips, deep breathing. Lift your hips, come halfway, roll your spine and come up. Stretch your legs, stretch your navel, open your Nadi Chakra, stretch your arms, and come down five. <coughs> knees back, bend your knees, stretch your back out and sit down. Lift your lower back, lift your chest, open your hips. So once your hips are relaxed and released, you can move in the postures much more easier. Five breaths. The whole yoga Veda Kriya is five breaths. Lift your hips, come up halfway, roll your spine and come up. Stretch your legs, stretch your back, stretch your navel, stretch your arms. And take your arms down. And if you need a blanket, take it. Because you're keeping your one knee on the floor and then you're taking your one foot forward. You're working to stretch your swans first and then stretch your hamstrings. So if you have a thicker mat like me, you don't need a blanket, but if you have a thin, you have a thin mat, take a blanket. Placing it under your knees. Turning your hip in towards your right leg. Now my left knee is on the floor, my right knee is forward. Turning the hip inwards towards your right leg. Push your hip down. Now first, make sure that the angle of your right knee is more than 90 degrees. Pushing it down. Stretch your frontal thigh and stretch your swans. And then take the thumbs on your middle back. Push your middle spine forward once again. Open your navel. First, pull your spine up. Stretch your spine and then stretch back. Deep breathing, five breaths. Inhale, come up. Make your right leg straight. See that your right knee is not falling outwards. You want your hamstring to stretch straight. Now move back towards your left heel slightly. Stretch forward. <coughs> Take your body close to your right leg. <coughs> Deep breathing. Five breaths. Inhale, come up, change your leg. <coughs> now, the right knee is on the floor, the left leg is forward. <coughs> the angle of the knee is more than 90 degrees. <coughs> Turning your head in 
towards the left leg, push your hip down. Get a stretch in your front of thigh, get a stretch in your squats, take the thumbs on the middle back, push your middle spine forward, open your navel, stretch your arms up, and then stretch your spine backwards. Make your left leg straight, move your hips back towards your right heel. Stretching forward, now make sure again that your knee is not falling outwards. You cannot do it like that. <clears throat> Stretching forward, take the body close to the leg. Stretch your hamstrings. Inhale, come up. So if you have a plankton, place it on the side. Stand in the last one. See that your toes are in the same line. <clears throat> Hold your palms together. Take your arms up. Stretch your legs. Hold your spine up. Stretch your arms. Press your legs and your shoulders together. Now, when you're pressing your legs, you have this outward rotation. Of your thighs, pulling your spine up, turn your palms up, open each joint of your finger. Stretch your palms, be strong in your shoulders. We are working a lot with the shoulders today. Take your arms down, <clears throat> change the grip of your palms, take your arms up, stretch your legs, pull your spine up, stretch your arms. Press your legs and your shoulders together and then turn your palms up. See that your navel is stretching and lifting upwards. Take your arms down. Place your right thumb under your left. And take your arms up. Same. Stretch your legs. Pull your spine up, stretch your arms, and then holding your palms firmly together, pulling your spine up, stretch to your right side. Open your vertebras from the side so the discs have more space and focus on the sacral lumbar space. Inhale, come up. Place your left thumb under your right. Take your arms up. <clears throat> stretch your legs. Pull your spine up. Stretch your arms. Hold your palms firmly. And pulling it, stretch to the left side. And breathe. But be soft. Don't go in a fight with your body.
in hell tag. A glance back. Hold your tongues. <laughs> Show it from behind and then I will turn around. Rolling your shoulders back. You see the movement? Rolling the shoulders back. Pull your shoulders down. So your cervical spine, the neck from behind, is breathed. <clears throat> Very important. Create space in your cervical spine. Lifting your throat. Now you're not taking your neck back. Lifting up. Stretching. Take the hand towards the right shoulder. Stretch your spine and muscles. Now this I've mentioned many times before. <clears throat> I keep on mentioning it. Feel where your heart muscles are. Because it's there you need to stretch. Slightly forward, slightly back. When it is short, it is there you need to stretch it. Take that up. Change the whole of your thumbs. Roll your shoulders back. Pull your shoulders down. Press your legs and your shoulders together. Lift your throat. Take the head towards the left shoulder. Stretch your side neck muscles. And again, smooth. Do yoga with finesse. Take the head up. Hold your palms behind. This movement is very important all the time, but especially today, we are building up a lot on this movement. The whole back bend class today, I have written it down mainly for shoulder openings because many of us if we sit all day we have closed shoulders rolling your shoulders back pull your shoulders down press your legs and your shoulders together now try to lift your arms up as much as you can over here you will open less over here you will open more Moving your hips back, stretching your throat out, stretch forward and down. Relax your arms, it gives you a better shoulder opening because the gravity starts to pull your arms down. Inhale, come up. <clears throat> Move your hips forward. Open your navel, throat. Press your shoulders together. Five breaths. Take the hand up. Change. The grip of your palms. Once again, roll your shoulders back, pull your shoulders down, press your legs and your shoulders together. Don't bend your elbows because if, if your shoulders are closed, your elbows will bend slightly. And you need to work more on that movement. Lifting your arms, stretch forward, now navel, chest, throat, stretching forward. Pulling your knees up, pulling the muscles below your navel, deep in your bladder, stretch forward and down. Inhale, come up. Move your hips forward. <clears throat> Stretch your navel, chest, throat. Press your shoulders together. 
show the cycle today. Amen. We can even put it this way. Today is the shoulder class with back bends in it. It's not a back bends class with the shoulders in it. It's a shoulder class with back bends as a supplement in it. <clears throat> Change the grip of your palms. Rolling your shoulders back. Pull your shoulders down. Rest your legs and your shoulders together. A very deep inhalation, you're lifting your arms up and opening the muscles of your eyes. <clears throat> Press your legs and your shoulders together. Inhale, lift your arms and open your eyes. Exhale. Lift your arms, 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 open your eyes. Take your left arm close to your right hip. Hold your right elbow and with your right hand hold your left elbow, pull your shoulders down, lift your navel and lift your chest. Deep five breaths, release. Change the grip of your palms. Again, roll your shoulders back, pull your shoulders down, I'll face you into it. So you can see <coughs> my funny face and my eyes. <coughs> Pressing your legs and your shoulders together. Inhale, lift your arms and open your eyes. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Take your right arm close to the left hip. Hold your left elbow with your left hand. Hold your right elbow and breathe. And release. Take your right elbow out. Again, this shoulder opening, what we are doing now, this and back. The arms in Gomukasana. <clears throat> Again, we did this shoulder, you need this shoulder opening for your back bends. And today I'm even teaching you Shirshasana. So you will need it for that. It's exactly the same movement for both the postures. Taking your right elbow in close to your face. Take your arm back. Place the palm on your upper back. Now see that the arm is behind your ear. It should not be forward of the ear, but backward of the ear. Take your left hand close to the right. Hold your fingers. Pressing your legs together, roll your shoulders back. Lift your navel. Stretching your middle spine. From your middle spine, stretch back. Deep breathing, five breaths. Inhale. 
Geld gemacht. Ich habe öfter gebraucht. Ich bloß zu face. Und ich habe morgen noch vor diesem Tag gesagt, you are doing bad when you do it. Everything which you are doing is always a part of the class. That's why your with the peer is very important. Take your right arm, close to the left hip, hold your fingers, lift your navel, stretching your middle spine, stretch back, and this is nearly a back bend. Take the hands on your hips. <coughs> Stretching your knees, move back. Come down halfway. Your body angle is 90 degrees. Turn your back and your spine to the right side. Open from the sacral lumbar spine. And try to turn as much as you can. Back in the middle, turn to your left side. Come back in the middle, stretch forward, come down, place your fingertips on the floor, and with your fingers move to your right side from your sacred and lumbar spine, open up. If you have the yoga mat, See that your head is at least on top of the center line, or even you can take it more back. Come back in the middle. Turn to your left side. Same, at least on the center line, or even. Press your palms on the floor. I'm turning on the side. You just do it because it's easier for you to see if I'm on the side. Now, a preparation for handstand. Pressing the palms on the floor. Pulling your knees up. Lift your knees up as much as you can. At the same time, press your palms on the floor. Place your hands down. <coughs> Stretch your arms out. Stretch your back out. Stretching your back out, inhale, come up. Stretch your legs. Stretch your navel. Stretch your back. Stretch your arms. And take your arms down. Stand in Tadasana. Five breaths. And release. <coughs> we are doing handstand and we are doing Shirshasana introduction. Today I will be focusing a little more on you how to jump up with both your legs together. Because last week <coughs> we did one leg at a time, both your legs together. Now take the mat close to this wall because we are doing Shirshasana also here. When you are jumping up, you need to jump with your hip close to the wall. So don't focus on stretching your legs out first, because that's not the point. If you try to stretch your legs out, you'll be somewhere halfway and you will fall down again. Just watch the movement. 
One important thing for Shirshasana and for even handstand, although we are Shirshasana, your shoulders and your elbows should be in the same line. For Shirshasana, it will be this, but this and this ratio always remains the same. close to the wall with your fingers because your buttocks will hit the wall and come down. You have to be careful not to kick the right seat. This is the movement. You are jumping towards the wall, towards the wall, like that. If you can come up here, this is the easy part. While coming down, you can see see everything here if you put a question. So I can show it quickly again. <clears throat> see that your fingers are not touching the wall. And then pushing towards the wall, jump. Once your hip is touching the wall, make it like straight. You need to use the muscles of your abdomen. Strength will come from here. Show it once again. See? <clears throat> Shoulders, elbows, palms in the same line. That jumping close to the wall. You're not jumping upwards, but close to the wall. And then legs straight. Once you are up, take five breaths. <laughs> Bend your knees. You can write it down very quickly, I can see from here, and I can explain it also very quickly. If not, we'll move into Shirshasana. Shirshasana. <clears throat> when you're learning Shirshasana the first time, this movement remains the same, that your shoulder and your elbow is in the same line. What happens as a beginner when you are learning Shirshasana, the shoulders tend to move back like that and you will compress your neck. So that's why many people who are teaching Shirshasana, either they don't know it well themselves and they just want their students to do it. And many people end up injuring their necks, which is not the goal of Shishasana. So the first thing is to open the shoulders and lift your shoulders away from the floor. And that's the only thing you'll be working with today. <clears throat> you're not placing your head on the floor. Your head is off the floor. Your only work is to do that. See? Shoulders forward. And head will not touch the floor. You will be doing it twice. Five breaths, 
five breaths for deep breaths because each five breaths is around 30 to 40 seconds. And as a beginner, I want you to just try that first and feel is your neck hurting, what is not hurting, and write down whatever is not working for you. Especially Shishasana is a sensitive posture, you should learn to do it correctly. Otherwise, you will have an injury which will last you many years. You will feel it for many years. Shoulders and elbows in the same line. Hold your palms firmly together. Now, the, as you are jumping in handstand, you will do the same thing. Jumping up, now see this. Lifting the shoulders away from the floor, pushing the shoulders forward. Now, even if you are doing Shrikshasana in the class here or somewhere else, try this work. Shoulders away from the wall, away from the floor. Because this will prepare you again for the bank dance today and even for Pincha Mahirasana later on. Bend your knees, cut down, rest your arms in front of you, and rest your head on your arms. Instructions. You do it once again. Hold your palms firmly. Now see that your fingers are touching the wall where you're doing it. Pressing your elbows close to each other. Jump. Take the legs up. Push your shoulders away from the wall and lift your shoulders away from the floor. <clears throat> Tighten the muscles of your abdomen because this is quite a strong posture and you're learning it correctly. If you learn it from the beginning just to put your head on the floor and down it, it's very possible that you would take the weight of your body on your head. With it on your neck and shoulders closing, you will damage your neck. <coughs> I'm counting around 40 seconds for you. Come down. <clears throat> Keep your arms in front of you and rest your head on your arms. Stabilize your blood pressure in the head. Take one racket, take two breaths. Take a yoga strap or any belt that you have at home. What you are doing, or you'll be using the yoga strap for. Sutta Virasana, 
for Ushtrasana and for Urdhva Dhanurasana. The distance or the length of this track is if you stand with your legs apart, same as your hips, hip distance apart, that and I want the same length of the strap in all the three exercises because we want a correct stretch. You know, if we don't know when we're doing Ushtrasana, Urvadhanurasana, how the hip is moving, how the legs are moving, what is the distance between your knees? And yoga is about perfection of the body, yoga asanas is about perfection of the body. If you build a house, you don't want the measurements to be wrong because the house will not be straight. It's exactly the same with the body. You want to work with the same measurement in a series of postures, so you're working with the same hip opening, the same swas opening, the same back opening. I hope you're ready with this. I hope you're ready with the measurement of the strap about same as your hips. <coughs> and then knee down, calf muscles, roll them out and sit down. The strap will make sure that your legs are not going out more than this distance. Hip distance is okay. More than your hip distance, if you move your knees out, you will start to close your lower back. First, go back. Feel where the leg is in your middle chest, middle back. Once you feel the break there, lift your hips up and Lie down on the brick, take the head on the second brick. As I mentioned before, we are working for hip lift, swas opening, and mainly for the shoulder opening. Holding your elbows, take your arms back. Open your shoulders. With that break, you're opening the space of your breath also, the break which is in your middle back. Have deep breathing or deep, breathe deeply, or breathe deep. Work to take your arms closer to the floor. Lift the hips. Take your arms closer to the floor. Lift your elbows up, change the hold of your elbows and once again take your arms down. Work to take your arms close to the floor. Yoga asanas is a work from inside. From externally if you see, the body movement is minimal. Because yoga is stillness, internally you are working to open your body, open and release your blockages.
That's why there's too many quick movements and jumping around on the mat. Is a new invention. This is not really yoga. It's more like a fitness. Open your shoulders. <clears throat> Deep breathing. Place the palms on your feet. Pushing your elbows. Inhale, come up. And stretch your legs out. <coughs> Sit in Gandhasana. Roll your shoulders back. <coughs> Pull your shoulders down. Look straight. See that your back is not moving backwards. Pushing it forward. Look straight. And you're keeping the blanket where it is for the moment, for the moment you're keeping your bricks on the side. I want you to use the same length of the strap. The first two exercises we're doing now is preparation for Ushtrasana to stabilize your back and strengthen your upper thighs and your deeper swas. As I mentioned, we are working with that same distance throughout the class now or for the next two postures. Moving your pelvic hip downwards. Lift your navel. Take the palms on your chest. Tighten your abdomen. Move back from your knees. See that you're not doing that because you're doing Back opening later on, only move back from your knees, five deep breaths. Inhale, down. Sit in the asana. Breathe. And feel how much strength and energy is there when you're not moving your external body too much, but working with your internal only. And once again, <coughs> palms on the chest, lifting your navel, lifting your chest from your knees, move back. Write down if there is something because I want a feedback also from you. And now, Ustrasa. Here, if you are a complete beginner and if you cannot come back, you would do it like this. If you have been doing it for some time, or if you know the posture, or if you can go in the posture, 
you will do like this first. Same. <coughs> the legs have to be apart. Same as your hips. You are using the same length of the strap to up. Pushing your hip down, lifting your navel, lifting your chest. Holding your palms together. Roll your shoulders back. Pull your shoulders down. For this <coughs> movement I explained before. Lift your arms up. And lift your arms as much as you can. Lifting your navel, lifting your chest. Now try not to go back too much with your knees. Little is okay because you can adjust it later on. Pulling back, place the palms on your heels. Push your hips forward, stretch your navel, stretch your throat, and look back. Sit, breathe. Hip pushing forward, lifting the navel, lifting the chest, lifting the throat. Push plus and up, then stretching back. If you have a neck pain, don't take your head back. Place your chin close to your chest. One last time. Hold your palms. <coughs> Roll your shoulders back. Pull your shoulders down. Lift your arms up. Lifting your chest. Pull your arms back. So your shoulder opening is more. <coughs> palms on your feet. Pushing your hips forward. Five deep breaths. <coughs> I hope your body is working from inside or see. <coughs> when you're still, you can still sweat. You don't need to run and move a lot. You don't need to do that quick movements to sweat on the mat. When you're working internally, it's still there. And please now place the blanket on the side. Now you need to come close to the wall because you are doing Urva Dhanurasana with your palms on the legs. I will take it close to this door because I don't have any other space to work with. Should be apart. The bricks should be apart. So your head can go in between them. Your head should touch the wall. Your head should touch the wall. Now, for the first movement, I'll show only. You just just watch and see. It's the door here, I hope you can see it. Head touching the wall. Heels 
close to your buttocks. <laughs> when you are coming up the first time, I want you to come only on your toes. Lift your heels and come up. Rolling your elbows in. This movement I explained before in Gopukasana. <laughs> palms on the legs. Don't keep your palms close to the head too much. Same as your shoulders. Shoulders and elbows in the same line. On your toes, lifting your heels, place your head on the floor, and come up like that. First thing. <clears throat> Beginners, five breaths. Advanced students, ten breaths, you do it. While coming down, Bending your elbows, placing the head on the floor, and then the back on the floor. Okay, now prepare yourself. <coughs> See that your bricks are apart. So your head goes in. I cannot do it and talk at the same time. And then rolling your elbows in, lift your hips, be on your toes, place the head on the floor first, and then lift up. Now I want you to work with the same strap, so the hip is the same, you are not moving your knees out to work with. <laughs> Beginners, five breaths, students who are conditioned, ten breaths, <clears throat> taking the time. Because when you do it, you cannot see me. So I'll show first, and then you do it, and stand and give the instructions. And come down. First, bend your elbows, place the head on the floor, and then place the back on the floor. Five breaths. Again, five breaths. What I count is between 30 to 40 seconds. And now the second cycle. In the second cycle, you are placing your heels on the floor. And you are doing the movement of moving. You are moving slightly away from the wall. You're stretching your legs, you're moving close to the wall. It is again to open your shoulders more. It's like a slight swinging movement. Don't do it, I'll show it first. And then I'll give the instructions and you'll do it. Same strap. <coughs> Head touching the wall, just watch, don't do it. Take your feet as close to your buttocks as you can. Now, when you come up, you can come up on your toes, but later on, you are placing your heels down. So, up and then down. Now, see the movement. Thank you.
10 breaths. <coughs> Beginners 5. <coughs> Conditions, condition students 10. <coughs> Prepare yourself. First, lift your heels, come on your toes. <coughs> then place the heels down. Then move. Bend your knees, stretch your knees. See that first your nose touches the wall. You don't push too hard, you don't want to damage your nose. <coughs> Beginners, five breaths and condition or advanced students, ten breaths. Open your shoulders. Then come down after your ten breaths. <coughs> Five breaths, resting time. And turn to the right side and come up. <coughs> now you're doing stage one shoulder opening in Mandraj Asana. <coughs> Mandraj Asana is Lord of Dance. Stand in Tarasana. If you have a shaky balance, you can do it with your hand on the wall. Bend your left knee, hold your left foot firmly. Firmly is the holding your foot like this. Firm movement. Roll your shoulders back. Lift your chest. This movement of making the knees straight in Manurasana, you're doing the same thing. Make the knees straight, open your shoulders. Firm shoulder opening. Focus completely to open your shoulder. Five breaths. Take the leg down, change the leg. Now I'm turning, you don't need to turn because it's easy to show with the bent leg. Say, if you need to balance, hold the ball and work. Firmly hold your foot. <coughs> Remember, this is a shoulder opening class. You're using back bends to open your shoulders. Open your shoulders. Make your knees straight so you pull your arms back. And down. Stand in person. Five breaths. Stabilize yourself. <coughs> Feel your shoulders. Don't close them. One 
Mandalore side of Mandrajas. Hold your left foot. Now focus completely. This is the last time. Shoulder opening and make your knees straight. Deep breathing. foot and again grip it strong movements but internal movements <coughs> because if you move your external body too much you're wasting energy open your shoulders Straight more. And take the right down. Stand in the person. Breathe. Five breaths. If you're sweating, rub the sweat back in your body. Hold your arms together and take your arms up. Stretch your legs, pull your spine up, stretch your arms. And now first you're stretching back with your lower back. And then you're stretching forward, coming down in Uttanasana. Inhale, stretch back. Pull the muscles of your abdomen in. Don't place your palms on the floor yet. Keep on stretching your arms away from you. So you release your back. And then place the palms on the floor. <coughs> Relax your neck. <coughs> Hold your ankles stretching forward. Come down. Uttarasana. <coughs> Stretch your arms out. <coughs> Pull your knees up. Inhale. Come on. Stretching your back. Stretching. 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 Tarasana, five breaths. And now you're doing Shavasana. I want you to shorten your strap because you're placing the strap on your feet. We want your back, or we want the back to be open. So when you're placing the strap on your feet, your feet should be together like it would be in Tadasana. Thank you for the class. I hope you didn't get a bit confused. Suddenly the video ended. I think the, the internet connection had suddenly disappeared. But anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the class. And again, if you have any questions, kindly you ask me something. 
but I don't really understand in which posture you meant it. So just write it down and I will clarify it for you. On Wednesday, we have Pranayama class, Ujjayi Pranayama with Kumbhaka. So I'll be teaching Kumbhaka Pranayama in Ujjayi. If you like the lesson, please share it and have a nice evening.